Today, we're talking about battleships and battlecruisers, and we'll start out with the battlecruisers. Battlecruisers exist in a weird place in Hoi 4, as their unique properties put them in a role which they don't typically excel at for a plethora of reasons, including cost. Battlecruisers are essentially lightly armored fast battleships, which would theoretically make them good raiders. In the game, however, there are many way cheaper options that are just as good at the job, including but not limited to tactical naval bombers, submarines, and light cruisers. Generally speaking, you do not want to build battlecruisers unless you have a very specific idea in mind. Although less armor makes them cheaper to build than battleships, it also makes them weaker during naval combat and more susceptible to critical hits. The only upside is that their increased speed makes them more likely to avoid hits from capital ships during combat. Their big brother, the battleship, finds itself in the same position as the battlecruiser. The only difference between the two is that battleships have heavier armor and at the slower, and also slightly more expensive. Because these ships are a significant investment, you usually don't build them but rather refit the existing ones you already have. Both battleships and battlecruisers are best used in bigger fleets, due to the fact that they require light screening and provide screening for carriers. Because the ships themselves and their gun modules are so expensive, they make excellent platforms to provide your fleet with air defense. Naval targeting of airplanes prioritizes capital ships and carriers and will rarely target screens due to their low scaling, which is why it is important to mount anti-air modules on your capitals to protect your investment instead of adding redundant AA to your screens. A lot of players swear by full AA battleships. I personally feel that these ships are incredibly overhyped and not as useful as players make them seem. By going full AA on battleships, you remove a lot of your fleet's heavy attack potential and thus effectively make it weaker in ship-to-ship -ship combat. Not just that, but you will never get to a point where you can shoot down 100% of the enemy's air wing anyway. It is much better to find a balance between heavy attack and AA and to coordinate your air force properly with your navy. Remember that building planes is a very small investment, whereas building battleships is a significant one. Torpedoes are the bane of these expensive heavy ships, so I cannot emphasize the need for you to screen them properly enough. These ships are the biggest and baddest you can field, but will also cost you an insane amount of fuel to run, and are the first to be targeted by aircraft during combat. It is best to use them sparingly, and only drop them into the fight when you need to, such as when you're engaging the enemy's fleet. When it comes to designing battlecruisers and battleships, there are three different routes to take. Full heavy attack, heavy attack combined with AA, and full AA. A full AA battleship simply has all its top rows filled by AA. Full AA battleships are best used against fleets with barely to no heavy ships but a significant air force overhead. This ship template will give your fleet an impressive passive AA outside of combat and will make it difficult for planes to launch airstrikes so long as they focus on these ships. I personally do not recommend going all in on AA battleships as it kills most if not all heavy the attack potential that your fleet has. Relying on carriers alone is not wise. The second option is the most balanced and in my mind the best bang for your buck in the current meta. Regardless of what model battleship you use, you dedicate two of your top row slots to the best available anti-air gun and everything else to heavy guns. This provides enough passive AA to keep your fleet healthy during travel, while also being able to do significant damage to enemy air wings before the bombing phase. The fact it has so many heavy guns allows it to do a lot of damage in combat versus other ships while not providing so much that the number of heavy attack becomes redundant. An alternative version of this template that works well would be using dual purpose guns rather than AA, as these provide both light attack and anti-air. This is especially useful if your fleet lacks heavy cruisers. The last option is the full heavy attack template. This template suffers from the same problem as the full AA template because it focuses a lot on one value which causes the other values to suffer. The biggest problem with this template is its expense, as the two three additional heavy guns cost an insane amount of IC. Furthermore, your ship will have no personal defense against enemy naval aviation which makes them extremely susceptible to carrier navs. These kinds of ships are best used in combination with a lot of light attack heavy cruisers and in situations where air superiority, both in and out of battle, are not an issue. Once again, I do not recommend using this template unless you have a specific plan in mind. There are of course other variations of these templates, such as almost naked battlecruisers to be used for raiding, however, these above templates are the most useful when it comes to conventional navy compositions and will provide you the most bang for your buck in most fleet engagements. If this video was helpful, feel free to subscribe and leave a thumbs up, and if you didn't like it, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a good day.